Necromancy is a brand new combat style being released into RuneScape in 2023. And it lets you do stuff like this. And this. And, well, a whole lot of other insanely cool things. Using the Necromancy skill, you'll be able to conjure an undead army to aid you in battle, with a powerful skeleton warrior, a horde of exploding zombies, and a wraith. And if you really want to become one with your necromantic side, well, you might just be able to do that too. There's seven quests, like seven full-on quests, so releasing with necromancy, that's going in. Ultimately, the goal for you assigned by death is stop the first necromancer. Uh, we call him TFN, and along the, on along the journey, um, you know, you'll be able to take on his lieutenant, which is a full-fledged boss fight. Um, that comes with everything you'd expect, boss kills, collection log, etc, uh, boss pet. It's, it's a very important part of your journey as a necromancer because for you as a player it's about you've been learning up to this point your abilities, use the them abilities, against yeah. this boss because this boss can only be killed with necromancy. And then right at the end um, you will eventually be able to fight off against TFN himself um, who again is, an, is a boss. So yes, the skill releases with two bosses and release. That is an absolute ton to take in. It looks like Necromancy may literally be the single largest content release in RuneScape 3 history. I cannot think of a single other point that you got seven quests, two boss fights, and a brand new combat style leveling all the way up to 120 all at once. All of that information could be classified as the what of Necromancy. It's all the specific actual things that are coming out. And it is an absolutely ridiculous list but sometimes I think it's even more interesting to look at the why and to question the why. Why now in 2023 are we getting a brand new combat style? What are the design objectives? And to go even more broad, why necromancy? And to answer those questions, there's only one person that should have all the answers and that's necromancy's design lead, Maud Ryan. So now that we've got a whole bunch of information and a whole bunch of questions, why don't I hop on a plane, get to Cambridge and talk to him myself. Welcome to Let's Chat About Necromancy. I'm so excited, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll see you later, big guy. Bye, buddy. I'm gonna miss the cats. My first flight is in 20 minutes and I'm gonna be going from Ottawa to Montreal. And then Montreal, I've got an overnight flight that should get me to Heathrow. <laughs> I am so excited to be here, and just about the next time you hear from me, we'll probably be talking about necromancy. Hello. Welcome to Hi. the RS Guys channel. I wanted to just start off by asking about the general concept or idea behind the design of necromancy. Like, what's the, what's the primary objective of the skill? So, like, I think the, 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 the overarching design for us was an easy combat, easy way to get into combat, like familiar way for players to experience PVM, go through the combat style, um, not, but also just bring a new way to play RuneScape, right? Because it's a brand new combat, it's a standalone combat style. You start off with uh, a very simple rotation and that rotation advances, it upgrades the talent trees and that sort of thing. So like that was the overarching design of like the skill in general, but also like, evolving archaeology so we have rituals which is our skilling component which fuels the combat side it provides necromancy ruins it provides the essence to, to uh, conjure spirits um all that sort of jazz with, with new skills just to preface like we we understand especially since archaeology like new skills are valuable when they are multiple things they apply to multiple audiences they get audiences together um, if we just look at divination, divination had a skilling method and that was its release essentially. Whereas if you look at archaeology's release, it was the skilling method, the, the story elements, the play alongside each other, the trading element. There was a lot more in it. It was quite a package deal. There's achievements. Um, so we know that that's kind of like the bread and butter of a new skill. When it comes to necromancy, it's like, what does that mean? Um, so we want to do the same thing, as Timber mentioned. Um, but obviously the big focus point is the new combat style. Um, I'm sure that everyone is probably aware that's probably the biggest part of it. <laughs> when you're looking at making a combat style, does it almost feel like a, a chance to have a do-over with the evolution of combat in terms of how combat is, is taught, how it's explained, how it's... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, a sponge is nodding. Um, yeah, it's a great opportunity to 
I don't want to say a fresh slate because it's not true. We have to make a combat skill that fits into an already existing combat system, but it gives us a much better like starting ground to try new things, make edits, um, learn from not just our mistakes, but learn from our successes as well, like where things have worked well. Um, as I'm sure most people are aware, like since the release of EOC back in 2012, up to 2023, where we're at now, we've, we've come leaps and bounds in terms of where our combat styles, existing three combat styles are and how they are now. And we've learned some good things from them. But we also know that they are still suffering from some sort of like systematic issues. It's not as straightforward as just making a new combat system because we wouldn't necessarily want to make it confusing for a player that you've got these three combat styles that work like this and this other one that works like this. Um, so it's more about making it familiar but different. Do you feel that that's something you've been able to accomplish with necromancy? That it, it kind of achieves the goal of feeling like RuneScape combat while also just being generally better or easier to onboard or more understandable? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like, uh, I'll name a few of the things that we've, we've done within uh, necromancy for you. Um, so first of all, all right, I'll keep it simple, like you still have abilities, right? Um, that hasn't changed, but we've changed the way in which abilities are sort of named. Like you'll be familiar with your basic, your threshold and your ultimate. Basics generate adrenaline, threshold requires a certain amount and then uses a different amount. And then ultimates, they usually require 100%. Um, we've, we've kept the idea of basics and ability that generates adrenaline, but we've also made abilities that can they're just called abilities. Um, they can have, they can either have a cooldown or no cooldown at all. So we started looking at no cooldown abilities and they can have a cost or not at all. So what this means is we've made some abilities that for example, cost 50%, kind of like a special attack. You press it, it costs 50%. You know, it says 30%, it is 30%. It's a lot simpler to understand. So that's like one thing. Um, I guess on that note, we just removed thresholds from necromancy, they don't exist. Um, they are fundamentally quite a complicated feature because we as developers in game just show you a tooltip that says at the bottom requires 50%. We do not tell you it only consumes 15, which is, which is oh, not really? Oh really? Yeah, that sounds so good. Thing. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so that's just one thing. We have also know that auto attacks within our existing combat styles have complex intricacies I won't go into, but like ultimately Necromancy has a better auto attack system. Uh, fundamentally, we believe it's better. Um, we also know that hit chance is an issue in game. Like, oh, missing is never fun. You, you know, you, you, I don't know, charge up that 100% adrenaline, you throw up an ultimate, at zero. Like, not fun at all. So, um, we, Necromancy, have considered like a damage potential alternative. So, based on how likely you are to hit, we just nerf the amount of damage you were gonna do down, rather than just outright say, no, you missed. Ultimately, your average overall is the same. So, so potentially, at the point of this recording, it's worth saying, yep. we're still in development. Subject to change. You'll be familiar as well with ability ranges. So like an ability that does 20 to 100% damage, on average that's 60%, but when you fire that off, if it does 20%, it just feels bad. We want to remove away from like things feeling bad. If you are choosing to spend something, we want it to feel good. Um, combat is about feeling good. Uh, and with that in mind, we've kind of squished damage ranges. So instead of it being 20 to 100, it might be, I don't know, 50 to 70, because the average was 60 on that ability. Um, what this does mean though, is it means that our existing critical strike system, or crit system as most people call it, doesn't really work anymore because it means you're probably critting all the time. Uh, so we are gonna look at potentially uh, making a new and better crit system, which I won't go into too much detail, but ultimately, as you level up, you increase your critical strike chance. Oh, that's so cool. And then your critical, critical strike damage. And then ultimately, we can start introducing items that say, if you crit, do 50% extra damage or 70%. Like, we can really up the damage of critical strikes. That's um, so much better. That's quite a spill. If anyone's got any water, I'll have a drink. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's a few of the changes, uh, just to cover it. Well, I mean, that makes way more sense if that is something that ends up coming out with it. But I think everything that you touch on is is so exciting for, for someone that cares about one PVM, but two, especially or specifically onboarding people into PVM. That's what, you know, I, I like to do more than anything else. And I think to have a skill like this where someone isn't going to need a full-on textbook guide to read for how to use it because it's it's intuitively there and it makes sense and there aren't all these well this works really well here but if you use it at this time it's actually a net loss or you've got auto attack weaving that is just confusing for so many players 
uh, that's really, really exciting to hear. Is there a component as well? Because you mentioned that you have a lot more resources at your mm -hmm. disposal now that it's not 2012 and the launch of the Evolution of Combat to do things differently or, or do things potentially a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be any kind of push towards better visual clarity or sound design or, or anything sort of in that realm that kind of guides the player to know that what they're doing is good? On the first part of the question about uh, additional um, resources, I think is the word you use. Um, <clears throat> we are looking outside of adrenaline, not just adrenaline being the, the go-to factor. So um, as an example, an ability called Soul Sap, you can use it and you will pull a soul from the target and that soul will be visible, but also be present in world, like floating around you and also above your head, a sort of like a head bar so you can see you have a soul. Um, and other people can see you have a soul as well, uh, which may be useful in team fights. Uh, you know, there might be rotations in the future where everyone wants to unload all of this at once. Um, so that's that. And yeah, in terms of audio cues, there are examples whereby, uh, depending on when you use an ability, for example, Volley of Souls, um, which is an ability that fires all the souls you have, that the audio will amplify depending on how many souls you fire. I think the benefit of like really better visual clarity and, and good audio design as well, it's almost a way to tutorialize the combat style because you're teaching people to make good, good decisions, but instead of having to list, hey, when you have five stacks of this, you should use this, it just, it, it's very intuitive. It's almost automatic to kind of lead a player into making a good choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you both mentioned that necromancy, the objective is to try and get more players into the combat aspect of the game. Is kind of a side goal of that, that you could hypothetically start with necromancy, play necromancy all the way up, and then that would give you um, like a solid leg up or understanding of how combat works in RuneScape that you could then apply to the other original three combat styles. I think the aim for a new player to sort of go through necromancy because you have the, not only do you have the ability, like you, I mean, as Ryan said, that you explain them very carefully and rotations act very slowly, but there's the equipment upgrading as well. So like, there's no like, there's no faffing around with making loads of random pieces of equipment anymore. The one to nine equipment is all upgraded. It's very s smooth, it's within the skill, it's within quests, it's within sort of tasks inside the, the, the city as well. So like, um, getting that leg up on a PVM is definitely like what we're looking for, to do. And for new and returning players, Necromancy is a great place to experience the content, go through the narrative, level up, get your equipment and stuff, learn how to do PVM relatively effectively through, through that, and then do that. And if you want to expand, you can go out to other places as well. Yeah, I'd like to see it as, um, I've explained this a few times, but you might play a game, um, I'm trying to think of a good example, but where they say like pick a class and then they say like difficulty, like four out of five, three out of five sort of thing. Um, I'd like to think necromancy is a low difficulty style to engage with. That doesn't mean it's not going to be hard to master um, because as, as you'd expect, all the items and abilities all together at the end game, I'm sure it's going to be quite complex. Um, but it's about being easy to get into. We're really focused on making sure that as you unlock an ability, it is meaningful. Um, it is in its design that if there is an ability you can press, it is always better to press it than not. Um, while you're doing auto attacks, they have a base amount of damage. If an ability is lit up, pressing it will be a net positive always. Um, in terms of unlocking the abilities as well, we uh, we kind of drip feed them to you, similar to other styles, like in terms of how you unlock abilities, but you might get an ability early on, very simple effect, you learn how it works. You might get an ability later on that affects that previous one, but you walk into it having good enough knowledge to go, ah, oh, that's really cool. That does that to my previous thing. Um, so trying to get you to essentially take you know, small, what do they say? Get you to crawl before you can walk, before you can yep. run, essentially. So it's a nice kind of incremental progression that gradually adds complexity kind of one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. But everything that you previously learn, it builds into the next thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's another super positive. At no point should, we don't want you to feel like this ability you've been using, say for the first 50 levels, suddenly gets replaced and you never use it again. All abilities will always be useful because you can't press a wrong button and we're not asking you to press a button um, every 1.8 um, seconds. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, global cooldown being 1.8 seconds. Um, at the moment with other styles, when you have to press something, you might fall back to pressing a random ability you maybe didn't want to press, like Sacrifice or uh, Tusker's Wrath or something along those lines. Um, if in Necromancy you aren't sure what to press, you don't have to press anything and we'll automatically give you a good automatic attack. You know, if you walk into a boss and you're not sure what you should do, We'll help you out and you can press a few buttons, but you're never going to be 
um, sorry, it's never going to be negative for you to just hold, you know, wait a second and, and take your time to choose what to press. I have one final very important question mm -hmm. for you. Would you say that necromancy is both good and fun? Absolutely, of course. Beautiful. Would you, hey, hold the phone. Uh oh, you're going to turn hold the phone. Yeah. We say that necromancy is good and fun. Oh, I mean, that's the hardest question of all, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I. It's a tough one. No, absolutely. I think uh, having, I've only played it for probably three or four hours. I think it's the best combat style in the game, not from like a power level. Obviously, a lot of what we're testing is not balanced, important caveat. But the way that it plays and the way that it feels, it doesn't feel like what RuneScape combat is. It feels like what RuneScape combat should feel like. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for it to come out and just play around with it. I think. It's definitely the style that I'm most looking forward to leveling up, progressing through, maining, just because every, every single mini step along the way, it's satisfying the whole way through. It's such a linear progression curve as opposed to you know any other combat style where you do no damage and then all of a sudden you do all the damage and then everything happens at once and then the meta changes and then Brad nerfs the Fasoa and then all of a sudden I have to learn a new rotation <laughs> and it's just, uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Awesome, it's great to hear. When you're looking at making a combat style and kind of, does it, does it feel like an opportunity to kind of un, not undo some of the mistakes of, of previous iterations of, of Gondola Sponge? <laughs> it is really not lost on me at all how absolutely privileged and lucky I am to be able to do this for a living. Like the fact that I woke up yesterday and got on a plane, I crossed the Atlantic Ocean, and now I'm gonna be playing my childhood video game in a pre-release. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's so cool. And I just wanna say, I know that doesn't happen without all the support from you guys. So I just wanted to very quickly take a second here and just say thank you all so much. Cause every time I experience anything like this, I get to have a drink with a developer. I get to take a picture with a content creator or another Jmod, or I get to play test something. None of that is possible without your guys' support. Thank you.